Now, I know it's wild, but not everyone in the world lives in their parents' basement playing video games and eating Doritos. Some people have a traditional way of life that goes back thousands of years, and they still live in the same way that their ancestors did. Indigenous people and their unique ways of life are under threat all over the world. Many have suffered at the hands of colonists and industrialists for centuries, but despite these threats to their very existence, some have even continued to live in their traditional ways. And this is apparently a threat to the total westernization of the world and the constant march of profiteers across the globe. Long may they thrive. Here are the 20 most dangerous tribes in the world. Number 20. The Chimbu Skeleton Tribe The name itself does sound a little bit scary, that's true enough. Anything with skeletons is a bit of a concern, but as we've already learned, the names of many indigenous people are often forced upon them by outsiders, and frequently those names are misguided or even just really flipping rude. So we need to do a bit more digging. The traditions of this tribe remain mostly unknown in outside circles, and since they were first encountered by Westerners in 1934, which was quickly followed by the introduction of Christian missions and coffee plantations, much of the tribe's history and culture has been eroded. The Chimbu tribe of Papua New Guinea use incredible black and white body paint and they dance and make themselves appear as skeletons. Originally, this would be part of the way that the Chimbu psychologically intimidated their enemies and may have also been a way for the people to try and harness a supernatural force. It is spooky. The mystery behind these remarkable designs and their uses has definitely made the Chimbu a source of fascination for outsiders. Perhaps that's why these traditional rituals are now only seen as part of a celebration that are gawked at by visitors. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. The Korowai Tribe This Indonesian tribe are actually famous. Despite being pretty isolated, and living harmoniously with nature in their rainforest home, the Korowai people have hit the headlines all over the place with tabloids looking for sensational stories of wild places and weird rituals. The newspaper's dreams came true when they could point a spotlight on the unusual culture of the Korowai people, listing cannibalism and witchcraft amongst their favorite hobbies. But as is always the case with the tabloid headlines, you do have to look a little bit deeper to get the real sense of what the story might be. In a remote area of the Indonesian rainforest, the Korowai build their remarkable houses between 8 and 15 meters off the ground sometimes in the trees or on tall stilts. The reason is said to be that evil spirits only stay around on the ground, so building up high will keep the family safe. It also offers great protection from animals and a lot of insects, as well as invading humans. They are a religious people, and their beliefs include reincarnation, as well as respect for their ancestors and a belief that some of their people even have magical abilities and they're able to influence things like luck and also detect black magic. This element of their culture is probably where the accusations of cannibalism and witchcraft would come in, and in the past, there may have been some violent endings to disagreements within the tribe. These days, however, most issues are pretty well solved by just giving each other gifts. I guess that offering a bunch of flowers to your neighbor is a lot less dramatic than eating them, but it probably makes a lot less mess as well. So, not so good for tabloid headlines, though. Number 18. The Suri Tribe The Suri, or Surma people of Ethiopia, have a unique style of fighting. Known as stick fighting, the two fighters, with bodies decorated with chalk mixed with water, are armed with a six-foot wooden pole. It's pretty hefty and weighs a couple of pounds. The long pole is held at the bottom, and the aim of the sport is to whack your opponent with your massive stick as many times as possible to get him to fall down. When your opponent hits the deck, they are then eliminated. 
The prize at the end of the tournament is an unusual one. The winner is carried on a platform to a group of girls and then gets to pick which one he's going to marry. So, young men are selected for their stick fighting skills, and the young women, the size of their lip plates. The lower lip is pierced and then slowly stretched out over the course of a year, using bigger and bigger discs as they go along. Ouch! The family of a woman with the big lip plate can ask for a price of as much as 50 cattle for her to be married. I like big plates, and I cannot lie. Number 17. The Yonomami Tribe The Yonomami people live in the remote region of forest in southern Venezuela, in the Orinoco River Basin, and in the northernmost area of the Amazon River Basin in the very north of Brazil. These people live in small villages which are subject to moving when they need to inhabit a new area for the purposes of agriculture, and they practice a kind of shifting cultivation, which is known as slash and burn agriculture. It's exactly as it sounds. They burn areas of the forest to clear space to plant crops. This makes more sense than you might think as the ash provides some fertilization for the ground and weeds are more or less completely removed out of the area. This is a technique that's practiced by many indigenous peoples, and after the land has been used for growing, the crops are then left to fallow and will revert to a secondary area of forest. Although it sounds brutal, the practice has taken place for thousands of years and does not impact the environment like the use of modern pesticides and such in industrial farming. As well as subsistence farming, the Yonomami also hunt deer, monkeys, armadillos, birds, and other things which may give the tribe its reputation as being scary, is an ongoing hostility between the people and other local villages. They're constantly at war with one another, and this can be pretty violent a state of affairs. But if you're not a hostile neighboring village, then you probably don't have to worry very much about the Yonomami people. Number 16. The Mashko Piro the Mashko Piro are an indigenous tribe from the most remote areas of the Amazon River Basin in Peru. This nomadic people are hunter-gatherers who have actually avoided contact with non-native peoples, and it's no wonder that this is how they chose to live. <laughs> given that tribal people who have been infiltrated by outsiders in other places have generally brought in disease, alcoholism, and violence to the indigenous populations of South America. The Mashko Piro people have a reputation for being very secretive and tend to shy away from being seen, but occasionally they have been photographed or at least spotted by nosy parkers out looking to poke around in tribal people's business. This doesn't always end very well. There were reports back in 2012 that after photographs were captured of the people, a member of the exploration team would then be found dead with an arrow in the heart, allegedly poked there by the tribe themselves. Number 15. The Mokan The Mokan tribe can be found all across the Magir Archipelago, a group of about 800 islands which are in both Myanmar and Thailand. These people are semi-nomadic hunter-gatherers with lives that revolve around the sea. And obviously, like all the world's natural resources, the seas are under threat from pollution and overfishing, meaning that the people's traditional way of life is also under pressure as well. <laughs> These remarkable people have such an affinity with the sea that they've developed an incredible ability to see underwater in such a way which is much more effective than for most other people. Human vision is generally pretty blurry underwater, but a study which examined the underwater sight of the children compared to European children showed that for the Moken, their eyesight beneath the water was twice as good as the other children who were tested. What the study then went on to prove was that European children could be trained to improve their own underwater vision by using as frequently as the Moken children. Number 14. The Ayo Rio Tribe The Ayo Rio people live in an area known as the Gran Chaco, which spans both Paraguay and Bolivia. These people were traditionally nomadic hunter-gatherers, but this was mostly squeezed out of their lives by missionaries in the 20th century so now, the remaining tribes people are more or less sedentary in villages. Although a few remain who were not contacted, they're now at risk from large-scale deforestation and loss of territory in the area. These days, there are laws in place to protect the indigenous people from contact with outsiders, and these are supposed to help prevent the transmission of diseases to the tribes. 
as they do not have the resistance that the outside world has. Many illnesses have proven to be devastating to these kind of communities if they are infected. This is probably one of the most scary things, really, that they're at such risk from dopey people poking about in their business. There are, of course, plenty of stories about the practices of remote tribes, but much of this is based upon hearsay and gossip. So, if you all want that kind of thing, you can go look it up. Otherwise, we're just guilty of spreading untruths for the sake of being sensational, and frankly, it's kind of ignorant. Number 13. The Awa The Awa people are an indigenous group who live deep within the Brazilian Amazon rainforest. They're believed to be approximately 450 strong, and they are one of the last remaining hunter-gatherer societies on Earth. Their unique way of life and deep connection to the rainforest are a rare and rapidly disappearing thing. The Awa have managed to maintain their traditional lifestyle despite external threats. Relying on the rich biodiversity of the Amazon for sustenance, they'll gather fruits, nuts, hunt for small game for their survival, and have a super deep knowledge of the rainforest's flora and fauna with a genuine connection to the natural environment because it's vital to their survival. Despite their resilience, the people have faced a ton of major challenges. Things like deforestation, illegal logging, and land encroachment have threatened not only their territory, but also their way of life. Efforts by the Brazilian government and international organizations have been made to protect the land and ensure their survival, but many of them still live in isolation, facing the constant threat of outsiders. Really, there's nothing to fear from the tribe, but to be honest, they have everything to fear from the outside world. Number 12. The Osmut The Osmut people are an indigenous group who are native to the southwestern region of Papa in Indonesia, particularly concentrated in the Osmut region and its surrounding areas. In the wider world, these people are known for their intricate wood carving. Artistry is internationally recognized and admired. But funnily enough, their unique culture goes far beyond their artistic talent and what the rest of the world can take from them. These people traditionally lead a substance lifestyle and rely on hunting, fishing, and horticulture for their food. Their society is organized into clans, with each clan inhabiting a longhouse where many different families live together. Their spiritual beliefs are deeply rooted in animism and ancestor worship, and they create elaborate ancestor poles in order to honor and communicate with their long-gone relatives. Like so many other stories that you'll see, the Asmat people have been invaded by the outside world. As is standard, tub-thumping Christian missionaries barged into the people's way of life and brought diseases and exploitation, as well as forced their beliefs upon people who had never asked for such interference. The destructive nature of these visitors to unique cultures should not be underestimated. There is lasting and serious damage that has been done to people all over the world as invaders exploit their land and destroy their cultures and traditions. The efforts that are being made to preserve the remaining Osmot way of life are likely too little and too late. Number 11. The Palawan Tribe the Palawan tribe is an indigenous people who primarily inhabit the Palawan Island in the Philippines. They're one of the original inhabitants of Palawan and have a rich cultural heritage deeply rooted in their environment and traditions. They have traditionally used a mixture of farming, hunting, and gathering for their needs. They're skilled in the use of traditional ecological knowledge to navigate their environment sustainably, and most likely, this is because they see themselves as a part of the natural world. rather than being superior to it as most Western cultures seem to think that they are. Their social structure is often organized around small and extended family units, and their communities are relatively small in size. Traditionally, they have lived in huts made out of bamboo and palm leaves, although modernization has led to some changes in their housing. The Palawan people have a distinct language which is part of a subgroup within the greater Austronesian language family, and like many indigenous languages, it faces challenges in preservation and transmission to the younger generation. Over the years, the tribe has faced a lot of challenges related to lands rights, which means that their lands have been stolen, cultural preservation, which means they've been forced to give up their own ways of life, and access to education and healthcare, meaning that they're exploited and then left at the bottom of society. Various organizations and government initiatives have since claimed 
that they aim to support the preservation of the culture and improve their living conditions, but in general, these initiatives often interfere and corrupt more than they leave the indigenous people to their own freedoms and rights. Number 10. The Kawahiva The Kawahiva are one of the very last uncontacted indigenous tribes in the Amazon rainforest. They mainly inhabit the remote regions of Brazil, and very little is known about their exact numbers, because they have chosen, quite wisely, to remain isolated from the outside world, making them one of the world's most unknown and perhaps vulnerable indigenous communities. The Kawahiva people live in small family groups, engaging in hunter-gatherer lifestyles, and they rely on the forest's resources for their entire way of life. They're known to have an intricate knowledge of the Amazon rainforest and its diverse ecosystems, which they use to survive in their secluded environment. Their decision to remain isolated? That's likely a response to historical encounters with outsiders, which have often led to violence, disease, and exploitation. As a result, they have actively avoided contact with the more broad society. And you can't really blame them. If every time that you saw an outsider they gave you a disease, attacked you, or stole your land, and then forced you to act like them, dress like them, and pray like them, wouldn't you stay very well away? Efforts have been made to protect the territory of the Kawahiva and other uncontacted tribes in Brazil, all to ensure their survival while preserving their cultural heritage. Organizations and government agencies now seem to understand the value of allowing indigenous peoples their rights and have begun to work to demarcate and safeguard their land against illegal logging, mining, and other threats that may encroach upon their territory. Number 9. The Walrani Tribe The Walrani Tribe are an indigenous group of people from the rainforest of Ecuador. They are traditionally semi-nomadic, moving within their ancestral territories in the Amazon basin. They're skilled hunters and gatherers, experts on the use of the forest's abundant resources, and the blowgun, known also as the piki, a poison-tipped dart, is essential tools in their hunting practices. Their language, known as Wayo Torero, is a unique and complex language reflecting their deep understanding of the rainforest. In recent years, efforts have been made to document and preserve this endangered language, and like many other indigenous tribes that you can learn about, they have faced significant threats to their existence due to the encroachment of fossil fuel companies and their greed, as well as logging in their ancestral lands. In recent decades, the people have also been advocating for land rights and environmental conservation, and their legal battles and activism have led to important victories in securing their territorial rights while protecting the rainforest. Number 8. The Sentinelese You had better keep out. The Sentinelese are of the most isolated people on the planet. They actively reject any contact with the outside world, and they may have inhabited their island as a people for 55,000 years now. Complete isolation on a small island in the Indian Ocean means that the Sentinelese are violently protective of their territory and have murdered anyone that has poked their nose into their business. It does sound harsh, but with their neighboring island's populations destroyed by disease that was imported from other places, any germ or virus that they might catch from an outsider would probably wipe them out. Obviously, it's tricky to understand anything much about a tribe that you can't really get near without receiving an arrow in the chest. And so, all that's known has been observed by a few nosy parkers on boats that were carefully moored further out than the arrows could reach off the coast of the island. In 1880, a British expedition would land on the island and discover the villages and houses abandoned. Presumably, the tribe had seen the invading force and then hidden themselves. The expeditioners did come across an old couple and some children, and in the hideous wisdom of the colonial attitude, they then kidnapped the people from the island for scientific reasons. The Sentinelese quickly became sick with disease, and the older people all perished. The children were returned to the island, but how many were then infected with deadly diseases is obviously unknown. It's no wonder that the outsider is met with hostility by the Sentinelese. Various attempts at communication have been made throughout the 1970s and 80s, with gifts being left on the beaches, but most were rejected and then buried by the tribe. More recently, it's finally been accepted that this is probably the safest for the Sentinelese tribe if they're just left in peace. 
I guess the nosy Parkers have finally gotten the message. Number 7. Hamar, Ethiopia The Hamar are an indigenous ethnic group who live in the southwestern region of Ethiopia, mostly in the Omo Valley. One of the most recognizable aspects of their culture is the elaborate body decorations and adornments. They often use ochre and animal fat to create designs on their skin and hair. Beadwork, jewelry, and snazzy colorful clothing all further add to their awesome appearance. The people use agriculture and cattle herding for their livelihoods. Cattle hold significant cultural and economic value, and owning large herds is a symbol of wealth and prestige within the community. Social organization within the Hamar society is mainly based around clans, with each clan having its own territory and cattle. And the whole community's rituals, ceremonies, and decision-making processes are determined by the system of clans working together. One of the most famous traditions is bull jumping, known as Akuli. This rite of passage for young Hamar men symbolizes their transition to adulthood. The event involves young men running over the backs of several bulls held in a row without falling off, and then if they succeed, they are finally a man. Number 6. The Mercy When a girl in the Mercy, Kai, or Terma tribes in Africa turns 15 or 16 years old, the tradition is that she will begin the process of wearing a lip plate. This begins when her mother, or sometimes another woman, will cut her lower lip and insert a wooden plug. A plug remains in place until the wound is healed, and it can take up to three months. After the removal dot, yeah. and her mom is the one who cuts her lips. Then after that, a disc may be chosen and added to the hole. The size of the disc is really a personal decision, and the young woman will choose just for herself how far she really decides to go with it all. The disc begins off smaller and then is gradually increased until the desired size is reached. Some of the girls may continue to add a larger disc up to around 12 centimeters in diameter, but it's not necessarily what's required by any means. It is a personal choice, and many will stop at a much smaller size. These lip plates actually carry a number of significant meanings for these women. It's a symbol of beauty, a commitment to the woman's husband, and she will traditionally wear it when she serves him food. It is a powerful indicator of their identity and membership in the tribe. Number 5. The Hadza The Hadza people live in the Lake Ayasi region in northern Tanzania in East Africa. They are one of the world's last remaining hunter-gatherer societies and have some very cool and interesting traditions. They've been nomadic by tradition and move within the seasons in search of food sources, mostly wild game, honey, berries, and tubers. Their hunting techniques, which will often involve the use of a bow and poison-tipped arrows, are super precise and extremely effective. Their language is one of the very few remaining click languages in the world. Their society is built on an extraordinarily egalitarian structure, and they have no centralized leadership or hierarchical systems, and they make all of their decisions through consensus and cooperation within small family-based bands. This equality is reflected in their shared access to resources and collective decision-making, they do sound pretty awesome, to be honest. Number 4. The Hua Orani Tribe Now, you know I like to offer you a new perspective here at the Fancy Banana, so in typical banana style, I'm going to offer you another look at a tribe that we've already seen today. The Hua Orani Tribe, also known as the Warani Tribe, Yes, the people from the rainforest in Ecuador, you're very luckily interesting indeed. So here are a few more facts about them. There are currently 4,000 people in this group. They speak a language that's completely unique and utterly unrelated to any other known language anywhere. And that's what's truly extraordinary. They mainly hunt small monkeys for their meat, and although they were traditional hunter-gatherers, They've recently begun to settle in mostly permanent forest settlements. This is the result of encroachment from outside forces into their historic lands. Interestingly, the people have different shaped feet from many other peoples. Their tree climbing skills and smaller gene pool has resulted in flattened feet with splayed toes. These are really useful for climbing trees, and many people also seem to have six of them on each foot. I hope these additional facts were interesting. We will swiftly move on now. Number 3. The Jarawa The Jarawa people live in the Andaman Islands of India. 
They're only one of a very few remaining hunter-gatherer tribes in the region and have maintained a largely isolated way of life for centuries. Their culture is deeply based in the traditional knowledge of the medicinal properties of plants that may be found in the rainforest. They use a whole bunch of different traditional herbal remedies for healing and have an extremely connected understanding of their natural surroundings. Due to their isolation and limited interaction with the outside world, the people have remained largely untouched by modernization. However, they have been pushed around by the outside world. Like most other tribes, they've seen all the typical ways of encroachment on their land and potential disruption to their traditional ways of life. Alleged efforts have been made to protect the people's rights and preserve their unique culture. The Indian government has now implemented policies we ask if India can protect an ancient tribe on the verge of extinction. In order to restrict access to their territory and minimize outside influences while safeguarding their well-being. Number 2. The Kalanago The Kalanago people, who are sometimes called the Caribs, are an indigenous group who are native to the Caribbean islands in the Eastern Caribbean, which includes Dominica, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines. They have a rich and unique history, culture, and heritage that has endured for many centuries. Historically, these awesome people were known for their fierce resistance to European colonization, particularly by the Spanish, French, and British. Their warrior spirit earned them a reputation as a formidable opponent, and their resistance played a significant role in shaping the colonial history of the Caribbean. They have a deep connection to the natural environment and are skilled fishermen, boat builders, and agriculturalists. They build beautiful canoes from carved out tree trunks which they use for fishing and transportation between islands. Their culture is rich in oral tradition, storytelling, dance, and music, and traditional art includes weaving, pottery, and basketry. These days, the people continue to assert their cultural identity and rights, and they're officially recognized as an indigenous group within the Caribbean. Number 1. The Carubo Tribe one of the groups of indigenous people of Brazil, the Daslala as they call themselves, or Carubo as they're known by outsiders, are some of the most isolated people in the world. This tribe is very small, featuring only about 150 people, and when you think of Amazonian tribes, you would imagine those old movie depictions and the sorts of adventure stories in retro comics and books. And you know the poison darts and great jungle hunting skills? Where those are actually not too far from the truth, when it comes to this tribe. They're also called another word in Portuguese that means clubbers, not the partying kind, but the weapon-wielding kind, so it probably has something to do with their reputation for violence. All nicknames stick, you know, although it seems just as likely that the violence is done to the tribe's people by the outsiders rather than the other way around. It's true that they do hunt with poison darts and fight with clubs, so I guess you just need to imagine an Indiana Jones kind of scenario and then go right ahead. That's all for today. Be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I will see you next time.